I've been walking for about 57 days and eight hours. I'm walking from Brooklyn, New York to Del Rio, Texas, where I'll then cross the Rio Grande into Mexico and then re-enter the United States as an illegal immigrant. That way I can get back on unemployment, get free housing, and so the government doesn't punish me for not being vaccinated. I've got about another 326 miles, and then I can get back to life as normal. <laughs> Better start working on my accent. <laughs> Wish me luck, amigo. This guy is a bit, if you don't know who Ty Fish is, <sighs> if you don't know who Ty Fish is, uh, he's got a bunch of shows coming up. Um, yeah, if you don't know who Ty Fish is, you have to go follow him. And I, I almost feel guilty sharing that entire clip because it's comedic genius. But to make sure that everybody goes and follows the Ty Fish. How does he spell it? T-Y. Oh, it's Ty the Fish on uh, Twitter. It's fantastic. Now, all right, we've got the guest in the backdrop. We're going to let people trickle in. I'm going to do an audio mic check because a lot of you have been saying, Viva, your audio is always low compared to your guests. I'm going to... One day, like science and technology being what it is, I'm going to like have a method of doing it. It always sounds good to me until afterwards. Uh, but Ty Fish, it's funny because it's true. And <laughs> knowing what was involved for me to get a visa, uh, you know, it, it's, I guess it's a... It's, it's a, it's a a good problem to have to be able to you know go do things lawfully uh but the border crisis is out of control and when it, when you see that they're like you know kicking out homeless people from shelters to make room for illegal uh, immigrants uh when you know that it's costing two thousand bucks whatever a month for, um yeah this is a it's a man-made problem or i should say government-made problem um and uh ty fish is uh, highlighting the hilarity that if you just come in illegally you never had to show a vaccine passport if you just come in illegally you'll get you know better housing conditions than the homeless veterans who uh, you know fought for freedom so that they could come home homeless to quote paraphrase tom mcdonald um but before we get into any of that people before we get into phil demers the walrus whisperer oh i'm gonna i'm gonna redub him now the manatee savior you may have noticed that um this, uh, it says this stream contains a paid promotion because it does people. Now, hold on one second. Uh, you know, it, it's easy, uh, to, I, I sleep on these sheets. So that bottom line, uh, this is cozy earth people, uh, cozy earth's mission is to help you find a sanctuary in your daily life. Amazing how this all loops together. Cause talking about finding a sanctuary for the manatees, Romeo and Juliet, uh, the luxury bedding loungewear transforms lives by offering the softest, most luxurious, and responsibly sourced products in the world. They start with selecting only the best suppliers with an eyeball towards quality, responsible production, cutting-edge technology. The sheets are amazing. They have, like, temperature, gauging, whatever. I don't know how it works. It's the most comfortable sleep you can possibly imagine. It's made from viscose, which is made from bamboo. Temperature regulating only gets softer with every wash. We're up to now our... I don't know, I'd say like our 10th wash. They're amazing. Uh, sensitive to skin friendly. Sensitive skin friendly. Uh, and they're available in 13 colors. And they don't just offer sheets. If you go to the website, are we, are we looking at the website right here? Yeah, we are. Uh, they got a ton of other stuff. Some stuff that I didn't even know. Uh, linen duvet covers. How do I get past it? Here we go. They even got, uh, I don't know, whatever, the, the bathrobes. For those of you who choose not to walk around naked. Um, they're durable, machine washable. It's the holidays, and it's coming up, people. Uh, you want to sleep well. And after you've gorged your faces, um, you want to have a, a, a nice, restful sleep so you can digest all that food while you're sleeping. You want your loved ones to feel better, sleep better, smile when they think of you. Why wouldn't you choose Cozy Earth products? It's the softest, most comfortable sheets, blankets, towels, PJs, loggers. I don't know what... Oh, joggers, that's why. And more. Guaranteed, Cozy Earth. It, you'll know it when you try it. They're beautiful. They're fantastic. It's comfortable. Um, you'll sleep like a baby. And not like sleeping like the baby, like up an hour, sleeping an hour, crying an hour, you know, uh, spitting up. Sleep like a baby as in they don't stick to your skin. Uh, they, you don't sweat. I sweat when I sleep. My wife doesn't like it. It's amazing. So if you go to CozyEarth.com, promo code VIVA, you will get 40%, up to 40% off your first order. Uh, Christmas is just around the corner. Do it, people. The gift that gives back is the gift of sleep. Okay, taking this out. Link is in the description of this video, of this stream, both on Rumble and on YouTube. 
Oh, I hope we're on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. We are. <clears throat> I keep choking on my own tongue here, people. I don't know how much, how long we have Phil for, so I'm not going to waste much more time talking about how this all works. You know how it works. We're live on YouTube, Rumble, vivabarnslaw.locals.com. We are going to end on YouTube after Phil, not before, because Phil's not around for too long today because he's heading down to Miami. He's going to explain it all to us. If you don't know who Phil Damaris is, where the hell have you been? The channel, we've had him on m many, many a times. We were going to do this in person, but timing didn't work out to do it in locals. Uh, so we're just going to do it digitally. And then maybe we'll see each other tomorrow at a protest, um, a pro demonstration, a demonstration. All right, Phil, are you ready? Phil is ready. Hold on. Please, by the I, way. Say, say it again. I like to call them protest parties when we're celebrating. Uh, good news <laughs> I was going to say protest. Protest will get you locked up for 11 years if you if you happen to have a pocket knife on you. Uh, Phil, I've done my intro, but I, I, I don't think I can possibly do you justice. I, everybody watching should know who you are. But for those who are new to the channel, welcome. Phil, tell them who you are. Uh, I used to work at a place called Marineland of Canada, well-known place, at least to Canadians and people just uh, a little bit south of the border. Um, became a whistleblower of animal cruelty in 2012, was subsequently sued for millions of dollars. Uh, that sort of inspired me to become even more outspoken. All of this back uh, 12 years now. Uh, lo and behold, chapter two, took some advocacy down south in the Miami area in the greater part of the last year and a half, advocating for solitary orca Lolita, who subsequently passed away months ago, sadly. Uh, but persistent as we, were, as we are and continue to be, there are other animals at the Miami Sea Aquarium that need attention. And uh, so of late, we're better known perhaps for revealing or rather publishing a very viral video of Romeo, the solitary manatee that's, uh, you know, created a great deal of public outrage and subsequently got them rescued. Uh, Romeo, Juliet and uh, their calf, Clarity, now have all been removed from the Miami Aquarium and are, uh, are uh, on their road to re rehabilitation. Uh, we'll, we'll flesh out a little bit of the intro and then we're going to move on to the, I, I didn't realize Romeo and Juliet had a calf. Um, what I was, okay, so the, the Marine Land decade plus battle that you had, we, we went over that in detail. People can go back and watch the stream, but basically you blew the whistle on how they were treating the higher order mammals, uh, Smushy the Walrus in particular. They then sued you and engaged in lawfare that lasted over a decade. Uh, the settlement consisted of moving Smushy the Walrus to a, a proper habitat because Marineland was just incapable of doing it. Abu Dhabi, uh, Smushy the Walrus? Correct. Walter? Yeah, it's a brand new facility. Uh, the, the biggest win is that whereas her calf and Smushy were separated at birth in uh, at Marineland, they're now living together. Uh, they're in a facility that is, you know, it's, it's got climate. It's obviously very climate controlled which is the first for Smooshy, otherwise he was forced to perform uh, under the hot sun. Uh, she's not doing performances. They are, uh, they are uh, display only. And it's beautiful. She's got fish in her habitat. There's ice. It's uh, as far as what the best interest of that animal, or in particular those two manatees, uh, this was a home run for them. Okay. And, and it's amazing. And people can go read up on that. It was a saga unto itself. After you resolve that, or after that settled, um, without getting into the problems of the settlement in terms of your not being reunited for one moment with Smushy, uh, you turned your sights onto Marine, uh, the Miami Sea Aquarium. Sorry, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. How did you pick, or what, how did you, how did Miami Sea Aquarium get on your radar after you were done with Marine Land? So I will have known about the circumstances over there. It just never occurred to me to actually go to, you know, I live in Canada. The, the thought of going down and certainly actively uh, participate in this was, you know, it just seemed like a, a bit, maybe not exactly um, something I could afford, for instance. But believe it or not, it was Jimmy Corsetti who sent me a, a message one day, got in contact with me and says, yo, we got to do something about the Sequarium. And believe it or not, he very generously paid for my stay. And so, you know, little time later, we were up in a helicopter. And once I seen the conditions of the animals with my own eyes, this is what ultimately led us on a path to, uh, to where we are today. It is amazing. You held a protest gathering there and you invited me down and you said, Viva, ordinarily, I'd never tell anybody to patronize um, Miami Sea Aquarium. Go inside and look at that enclosure. And I went in with my kid and I mean, it... it it was mind blowing that they were in a, a, an enclosure that if it were a pool at a holiday inn, your kids would be saying, this is a crappy pool. It's tiny. And these two very, very higher order mammals had been in there. I couldn't believe the answer that the guy gave me for, well, since 1958, 57? Yeah, 57. Uh, they'd been in there, I mean, 60 years for Romeo, 40 some odd for Juliet. 
Uh, and so you become aware of this and they become your next target, but it wasn't Romeo and Juliet at the time, it was Lolita the Orca. Mm -hmm. That's what led me to, to basically get our eyes onto urgent, or rather onto the uh, uh, Miami Sea Aquarium. And then, you know, subsequently, once you start to see, as you did, I mean, look, the first thing you saw, Viva, and you have a viral video, is the outrage that you expressed having physically seen those manatees. So really, it was a question of just getting that information out. Uh, and this is just what we did. It, it happened to be very, very timely and very effective. So you, you, made, you were pushing for Lolita to get her out, but she... Subsequently, she died before anything could be before. She died. She died um, amidst a PR campaign that suggested that they were uh, intent on releasing her, but we knew better. There was just no way she was going to survive these ever deteriorating conditions. And, uh, you know, we weren't wrong. So Lolita the Orca died. Her, what was the other name that she went by because Lolita uh, was not uh, popular on the internet? Tokete. Tokete. Uh, so after that happened, she passed away. Do, do you know what they do with the, with the corpse after she dies is it do they cremate it or what, what do they do with it yeah in this particular case they sent uh they they sent her body immediately before anyone can actually really, before any government agencies could really even get involved uh they sent them to uh i believe a university in georgia they did a very quick necropsy and then um uh, cremated her and any cause of death other than old age but this is the convenient story they said I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Uh, the, the numbers don't add up, despite the fact that she was advanced in age for captive whales. This is not representative of uh, what's happening in the wild. She could have lived many, many, many more years. And I do believe, had her conditions not been as bad as they were, that she would still be alive today. So Lolita dies. Um, uh, you should probably also flesh out for those who are not aware. What You got into some legal stuff with Miami Sea Aquarium. After settling your, your lawfare initiated by marine land it seems that another uh, aquarium sea aquarium whatever didn't learn the lesson of marine land what's what what happened with you and what's the status of that now so they've sued me for defamation oddly uh they're now trying to drop that uh, element of the lawsuit uh because they're claiming that it's going to be difficult to calculate damages on the fact that lolita died we know of course that they don't want to actually give any documents by way of uh by way of um discovery uh, they were also now seeking a, <laughs> you're going to get a kick out of this. I don't know if I've ever told you the details of this, but they're seeking a protective order against me. The reason that they're seeking a protective order against me is because now they're suing me for the defamation as well as trespassing, despite the fact that I've never actually flown a drone in my life. And I was in South Korea when they alleged that I was the person responsible for this drone footage that had subsequently gone viral at the time. But so what uh, my partner, Marketa Shusterova, who's the co-founder of Virgin Seas, messages me one, one day and says, I'm on the Sea Aquarium's Instagram, and I can see that they themselves have flown drones in the park. And so she sends me a screen grab of the video itself. I take a look at it, and it's actually quite egregious. It's awful flights. Uh, they're really close to the animals, and the animals are running and scattering. So I take that. I, I take that screen grab. I, I edit it so that there's no mention whatsoever that the Sea Aquarium actually took it. I tweeted it at their CEO going, yo, look, I'm in your park. I'm dangerously flying close to animals and really loudly above the public. And then I did clarify and say, oh, wait, that was you. You know, you, you made a big mistake suing me. Nonetheless, it's as if they skipped the, the detail that it, I, I clarified that it was their drone footage and their, that was the, the evidence that they submitted by way of needing a, uh, a uh, protective order against me. They've since uh, uh, missed all the deadlines to the responses. So frankly, I don't know where exactly we're at in the lawsuit. I just know that it is once again, uh, it's just a comedy, another comedy series at play. Yeah, because the initial, the initial uh, order, or not order, but the motion that I saw was to prevent you from accessing the property, prevent you from flying a drone over it. Did they uh, identify the statements, the alleged statements through which you defamed never, Miami no. Sea Aquarium? No, there was never any statements issued or uh, provided. Okay, and so, it's, I mean, that's hilarious that you use their drone footage and they submitted as evidence of, of, of wrongdoing. Lolita dies, um, and then you turn your focus to Romeo and Juliet, although you were focusing on them as well at the time, but now they're the last remaining targets, or are they? So Romeo, Juliet, their calf, tell the world about that. So what becomes is my partner uh, calls me again with a great idea and says, well, see, I should be mentioned, I'm blocked from social media as well as you are <laughs> from the Miami Sea Aquarium. So I'm not able to see the stuff, but you know, some people are able to. And in this case, uh, my partner sends me a message saying, okay, Miami Sea Aquarium just declared November as Manatee Awareness Month. And so our job is to show the world how awful they treat their manatees. And this is what inspired us ultimately to start uh, republishing uh, more current videos about Romeo. Uh, and so um, I'm looking, I'm just going to bring up the Miami Sea Aquarium so that the world can see. But 
Um, so Romeo and Juliet had been there forever. Had there ever been discussion about moving them to a sanctuary until you started putting a little bit of blast on the Seaquarium? There have been intentions from the outside, but the Miami Seaquarium well, seemed not inclined to do anything and the public pressure ultimately forced their hand. Uh, so things were lined up to an extent, but it did take that uh, our, our nudge to actually get it happening. We we were blessed yesterday to get invited by Zoo Tampa to go actually meet and visit uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet. And it was just a wonderful thing to see. And they were so thankful. And we were, of course, just as appreciative of it all. But, uh, you know, they, they recognized that this was, you know, the public outrage played a heavy role in all of this. And they're just so appreciative. They, they, they'd been, they themselves, in, in, a, in a state of heartbreak, knowing these conditions, of course. It's, it's crazy to me because it seems, at least when I went there, I've never seen a meaningful crowd there. It's the most depressing sea aquarium, whatever you want to call it, I've ever seen. The real estate seems like the most primest of real estate for other forms of development. It's, I, I don't understand why the, the intent would not be just to not liquidate, but you know, displace, find um, sanctuaries for all the animals and do something productive and, and commercially viable with that. Do you know where the two manatees went or the manatees and their cats? Yeah. So Romeo and Juliet are currently at uh, Zoo Tampa's Manatee Rehabilitation Center, which means they're there temporarily. Once they're, uh, um, once they're medically cleared, they will be looking for a permanent place for them. And we're hoping it's uh, the Homosasa Sanctuaries. Uh, their intent is to get them there as well. So it'll be a semblance of an entirely free life, only they'll be you know, confined to a, to a natural space and remaining under human care, given the fact that, you know, their health is, there's some question about it. And they're, of course, at an advanced age. Clarity was, is actually now property of the Florida Fish and Wildlife. The intention, and she's at Orlando's uh, SeaWorld Manatee Rescue Program as well, with the intent of releasing her possibly to the wild. That's the hope. So, you know, this, the, the good news just keeps getting better. But I, I got to stress that, and, and absolutely in the case of Romeo and Juliet, if in fact they wind up being permanent residents where they are now, it's a great place for them. They're in good hands. They're with other, finally with other manatees. And to, to watch it with our own eyes yesterday gave us chills and goosebumps like you can't imagine. It's just a, it's an absolute, it's a humbling experience, but it's a blessing to witness the change in these animals' lives, like in a matter of weeks. Uh, wait, so where is the new place that they're at? It's up in Orlando? Zoo Tampa, Zoo Tampa. Zoo Tampa. Yeah. How, where, where, that's in Tampa. Correct. <laughs> I'm kind of, ah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very smart. Um, and so they, they look, uh, compared to the way they were just sitting there stewing at Seacrim, they look visibly better. Yeah, there's still some healing necessary due to their <sighs> awfully sunburnt, sunburnt skin. So there's, some, so there's still some recovering, but the attitudes have changed so much. So they have a reason to live again. And you can see it. It's, it's, it's on their faces. It's in their demeanor. Again, a humbling and, and uh, experience, but absolutely, uh, absolutely blessing to witness. It's amazing. I, I, I did put you as the hero on the thumbnail and, and, and I'm thinking like some people might, th there's no discussion. What you've done is, I, I'm trying to think of like the metrics of heroism in terms of personal sacrifice, personal exposure, personal risk for, uh, you know, not, not any sort of personal financial gain or personal gain whatsoever. I think quite to the contrary and you've done it. So, you, so by the way, they had a calf, Romeo and Juliet. H yeah, how does that how does so that Juliet happen? will have been. So Juliet was with Clarity when you went to see them. That was yep. Juliet and Clarity. Romeo was in the offsite pool in isolation, circling the drain. That's all he was doing. Oh, in complete really? solitary confinement offsite. Yeah, that's the video that ultimately went uh, viral. Was us filming Romeo in his solitary confinement. Uh, it's a stupid question, and I'm going to ask it anyhow. Did they make the babies, or did they have the babies naturally? Oh, uh, they will. That's a natural birth. Um, I don't know the entirety of the history. I understand that there were uh, multiples of calves born and they've been sent to other facilities. I, I really, manatees was not my area of expertise until about a month ago. And now I'm, you know, I'm really starting to delve into this. But uh, yeah, there's a long history of breeding and sending to other facilities. And we're going to take a look at where those manatees are and see if we can't do anything for them too. Amazing. And so that's the, the latest white pill was Romeo, Juliet and calf being brought elsewhere. Uh, what else is going on currently and still at the Miami Seaquarium? Well, so the Miami-Dade County, as of November 1st, issued a 45-day warning that if they didn't fix their park uh, in regards to a scathing USDA report that came out some months before, that they're going to exercise all legal options, including ending their land lease agreement. And that deadline is tomorrow. Today. Oh, it's today. Today. Tomorrow is the day where they're celebrating the fact that they're now open technically 
in a legal way. But, you know, we don't know exactly how the county is going to react, but we know what we want. We want the Miami Sea Aquarium reduced to dust. We want those tanks filled up and we want that this to be that we want that stain removed from Miami forever. So when we talk about the historical date that tomorrow is for the demonstration for the protest party, it's day one of the end of the Miami Sea Aquarium. Now we're going to get to the protest party, but before that, a little manatee porn. Let's just see what it looks like. Okay. Interesting. Choice of music is... Apparently it's close up, Phil, so we're gonna... <laughs> I bet nobody thought they would end the day or at some point yeah. in the day. Not sure I signed up for this, but here we are. Really? Beauty's in the <laughs> Okay, so that's what it looks like. I mean, let's skip ahead here. The rest. So it's tough to see what exactly. It's like perpendicular manatee sex, which. So they do it the way mammals do it. It's a, a, a manatee P to the manatee V. Uh, okay, so tomorrow, protest party. What's the purpose? What's the objective? And actually, going forward, what happens to Miami Sea Aquarium if their land lease is expired or no longer renewed? Well, it, we're there to celebrate regardless, whether it be a rainy, windy monsoon or not. Uh, we, you know, we want them to know that we're an ever-present um, presence. We're in every empty seat in that place. We've got eyes above, around, below if need be. Uh, you know, they, they, they did the old ignore, laugh at, fight, and, you know, subsequently we will win. And this is where we're at. We're there to show them. You couldn't sue me. I tried to get a gag order and what became the biggest viral video that we've ever produced. You, you sued me for flying a drone, so I put a helicopter over you. What are you going to do next? Well, I'll tell you what we're doing next. We're eliminating you. So we're there to dance. Uh, urgencies, tell the world what that is. Urgency is a non-for-profit that I started with my partner. Uh, really, we're only uh, maybe eight months into this thing, but we've had you know this pretty incredible impact. I've always wanted, after I'd become a whistleblower, to be a safe to, to provide a safe space for whistleblowers. So the objective is, again, I stress, I don't fly drones. I've never flown a drone in my life, but I'm willing to publish it and take the heat for it. If you're a whistleblower, if you're looking for a place where you can, where you can be safe to provide the information that, is, you know, that, that the public needs, we'll, we'll provide it and we'll, provide it, uh, and we'll shelter you. So you know, this was the objective. We're doing much of the work on our own, but you know, we're every day getting more and more information from other facilities and in fact, you know, zoo employees are contacting us, but they understand this is what I was. And so I'm trying to provide a space for play, for people like that, as well as a space where we are sort of unapologetically, aggressively in a, in a direct action way, uh, you know, very consequential. So, you know, if we come knocking on your facility, you've got two choices, fight me or just give me the animals. But I promise you both options end with us eliminating or taking your animals. Um, it's a not for profit. Is it? Oh, uh oh, they've just cut Phil. Okay, when he comes back, um, I'll bring him back in. Let me just see what's going on there. Until such time, people, let's just see what's going on with the manatee. Oh, yeah, I'm joking. There's not a lot of things. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop that and see when Phil gets back in. Uh, let me text him and just make sure that everything's okay. Uh, da, da, da. You just went black. I'll, I'll bring him back when I see him here. Okay, I'm going to take out the, uh, the manatee, manatee porno, the manatee sexual coitus videos. Uh, so the question I was going to ask him was where the um, not-for-profit is incorporated. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I should highlight something about Phil. For those of you who don't know, uh, with the, the, they called him the walrus whisperer because he imprinted with, the, with this walrus named Smushy when she was at, oh, there he's back and developed a relationship with her that went viral. He was on Knockout Canada, or Wipeout Canada, not Knockout. And, um, and since then has been on a mission. And uh, it's amazing because I've known him now I've, since pre-COVID. And uh, an amazing guy. Okay, Phil, I thought they, I thought they came for you. <laughs> so the only issue now, if you're talking to me, is I can't hear a thing. I don't have, I got, I got bounced by a phone call, so I apologize, but I can't hear you now. You can't hear me. I can't hear you, unfortunately. No, I can only hear myself. Maybe that's something I could do at my end, but here I am at 46, not knowing what the hell I'm doing. Okay, now hold on one second. I'll, what I'll do, hold on, watch this. I'm going to do this. Um, uh, hold on. Where was the 501 not-for-profit incorporated question mark? Oh, you know what I could do here? I'll, I can ask the questions in the private chat. I'm just going to get Phil to start talking. Uh, let's go into private chat. 
where is the not profit inc okay so we'll see this and um, let's see if he can if he sees the question in ah, he's got to move the phone <laughs> look in chat i can't even comment this is awful it's in canada viva i can't see nothing i can't type i'm so sorry i'm that hmm. guy but uh Maybe I can come back in from the back door if you need, but uh, you want me to do that? I'll go out and come back in. Happy to. Yeah, yeah I'm going to do that now. Okay, we'll get this back. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to kick him from the stage. Okay, he he clicked out. Well, it'll give me time to talk about this anyhow. So he he bonded with a um, the Smushy the Walrus imprint that had a unique relationship that got him viral. Went on Wipeout, and when when people want to talk about lawfare. He got sued uh, by Marineland, and they dragged him through the court process for years. Uh, you know, discovery obligations, uh, everything. And then they, they postponed one hearing after another. They sued his girlfriend. Let me go to the chat here. Um, and he ultimately won that battle after a decade. What we didn't get into, and I did, almost better I talk without him being here about it because I don't want to bring up um, bad feelings that he might have, lingering bad feelings. Part of the settlement was when Smushy the Walrus was relocated to a better environment, he was supposed to have a, a unification with her, like a you know meet up after all of this ordeal because she went off to the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, and not clear that Phil could get there. They screwed, they were so bitter and, and spiteful, they screwed him out of the settlement, but he moved on knowing that Smushy has moved on to a better life. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, can you hear me now? Perfectly. I just want to stress that despite the fact that we did successfully have the, wal the, the walruses moved, and I didn't get my reunion as promised. I'm now going after the money that I had otherwise foregone to accommodate that move. So they owed me all of my uh, legal expenses up until the point of their dropping my lawsuits, or, or shortly thereafter. I would have been, I would have had, I would have been within my rights to go after cost motions, as you know. They would have owed me. Uh, my lawyer had an estimated between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars. I said I waived that money and said just move the walruses. They said, yeah, we'll do that. And of course, with the details of I need my reunion. You know, I did go back to the park and, you know, the reunion was grossly compromised by them. As soon as uh, Smooshy recognized me was coming towards me, they pulled her back. Uh, they kept her away. I was, you know, I threw half conniption. But nonetheless, I'm now going after the money as well. So, you know, it can be said that I'll probably bankrupt uh, Marine Land. I'm looking forward to that day. Too. Well, we'll, we'll th you'll, you'll, you'll throw a very unique, specific party when that happens. Um, but the question was, Urgencies is a not-for-profit based out of Canada or incorporated yes. in the States? Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're registered in Canada, uh, but moving forward, we, we are intent on becoming 501c3 registered in the U.S. It's just a question of getting lawyers involved and putting together our uh, board of governors, et cetera, but uh, all in the works. And, uh, you know, frankly, it seems a lot of our work is, you know, Canada just doesn't have a lot of these facilities, and it's great that we're, we're, we've all but reduced marine land to dust, but Chapter 2 is certainly coming into the States and doing some advocacy work there. We're already well on our way, and that, that seems to be where we're going. Uh, the other question that I had, how can people support it? Are you open for donations and that type of financial support? So as we speak, on account of the fact that I've been sued, um, I have a website, fightforlolita.com. It's a, it's a GoFundMe. It covers legal expenditures, travel expenses, you know, it, it might even buy me a beer when I'm over here. You know, some people insist very often, they're like, this one's for a beer. So it's like, okay. But, uh, you know, people are able to support me there if they, if they wish. But, of course, very soon we'll be launching our website and then there'll be a, a space where people are uh, free to donate to the, to, the, uh, to the urgencies. Now, you said GoFundMe and that was not a slip for Give, Send, Go. You're actually using GoFundMe? I've been using it for 12 years. It's the only one I know of. I Listen, I'm looking forward uh, to the day uh -huh. when I never use them again. It's, it's well on the works, and I'm guessing I'll be accepting donations only up until probably January 1, and then once the website is launched, and we're doing this work literally as we speak, uh, we'll I'll, be good to go. Offline, I'll, I'll hook you up with Jacob Wells from Give, Send, Go, and you'll, you'll never go back to go. Wonderful, appreciate that, and I will. Uh, okay, so now, there, uh, from what I understood, we spoke for two minutes before we got started. There is some breaking news coming out of Canada's Marine Land? Correct. So uh, weeks ago, in, in about a week in advance of our publishing the, the Free Romeo uh, video, we published a video of a clearly dying beluga whale. And for those who don't know, we've got a big problem at Marine Land since 2019. Uh, you know, best estimates are that there's about 25 or then some whales that have died. The government has been steadfastly watching all of this and doing nothing. And so no one's holding Marine Land accountable. And so we are published a follow-up video. It shows that the, the, the beluga whale subsequently died. 
And so by way of all of this today, you know, we're not only uh, viral in the U.S. for the work we're doing, but, you know, as well, we're getting attention now in Canada for breaking the news of uh, another another beluga whale that's died. This is descent today from the Canadian press. I'll, I'll, I'll read it afterwards, but 15 beluga whales have died since 2019? So I'm going to say more because there's at least a number of beluga whales that could have been born and subsequently died in 2020. But on account of COVID, it was hard to get an actual eye on them. But in 2019, we passed a law, Bill S203, which banned uh, beluga or rather whale, dolphin and porpoise breeding. And so Marineland used to breed between five and seven beluga whales. Again, in, in 2019, we've got an affidavit saying that they've got, they had 58 belugas, but that's before the last round of births of the between five and seven belugas. So it can be said that in 2020, there, there will have been uh, 63 beluga whales, and now they're down to 36. That's, in, that's ridiculous. Now, uh, also, I know it, we've discussed it before, but the legislation that you were uh, a part of having passed in Canada prohibits... Um, reproduction or, or reproducing Correct. whales in captivity. In addition to import and export. Now, uh, the government is able to sign off on exports, which we know that, uh, that the government did approve uh, last year when they sent five beluga whales to Mystic Aquarium. And by way of breaking news only a few days ago, a third of those five beluga whales have since has died. And th again, that's news that, that's just making headlines as we speak as well. Uh, do, they, do they know why of what? Is there a, an illness going around or all I can it? say, all I can suggest is um, all of Marineland's animals are compromised. That's why, you know, getting Smooshy out when we did is it, it, it can be said will have saved her life. It saved her calf's life. There's no question about it. Every animal that is either in or, you know, it sounds like from Marineland is uh, sadly at risk and poses risk for these other facilities as well. I, I imagine Mystic Aquarium is probably no longer inclined to, to you know, to get any more of these beluga whales, despite, you know, best intentions, if you will. But yeah, there's a big problem. Uh, it's the water, the water over there. And I've been, when I was a whistleblower in 2012, it's on account of the fact that I stressed that the water was going to kill all these animals. And here we are. And what about the water? Acidity, uh, chlorination? I don't know how they keep it clean. If you've never changed a filter in your fish tank, and so assumes the marine line was built in and around 1967, I believe, uh, there's never been a, a water filtration change. There's never been sand filter change. The, the sand is still the same. So, uh, you know, take a, take a, take a, any fish in a fish bowl, put it on a, of, or on the stove top, put it on low and watch that water go to, go to shit over a decade. And, you know, there's not a whole heck of a lot of questions as to what's happened. You know, you're, you're taking marine mammals that are otherwise in really cold environments in the Arctic and you're putting them in the beating hot sun and, uh, you know, with, with, with an archaic system, you know, much of these facilities have been born, were built in the 50s and 60s, and there's no incentive. You, you haven't really heard of these new expanses outside of the new SeaWorld at uh, Abu Dhabi. You haven't heard of new expanses, any investment into whale facilities, et cetera. And the same can be said of their filtration systems. They're archaic and all breaking down. Miami Sea Aquarium, same thing. I'll boldly say the water was killing those animals. Uh, that's ridiculous. And, and Marineland in Canada shuts down for six months a year. Like it's not open during the winter season. So what, what no, happens during me. the winter season? Well, that's when there's a, you're down to uh, very few staff members and uh, very little incentive to do anything until about two weeks before the park opens when there's a hectic cleanup operation. Uh, and now you mentioned also with the manatees being sunburnt. I never actually even thought of that. Um, that's that's decades in the water might have been, I don't know, what, 10 feet deep at best. And when they're sitting there floating at the surface, they're just getting sunburned. There's there was no meaningful shade that I saw. And because the manatees were actually in uh, salt water, it increases their buoyancy. They had a harder time getting down to avoid that. Whereas, you know, manatees spend the majority of their time in fresh water. And thankfully, they're now in fresh water. So to actually be able to see them in a more natural environment, of course, no, not more like because uh, we know it's not a natural environment that they're in now, but it's, it, it further replicates it versus out of the sea aquarium. Uh, you see the immediate changes that their skin is really improving quickly. That's, phen that's phenomenal. So the protest party tomorrow, what time does it start at? Where it's at? Where is it at? At the Miami Sea Aquarium, 11 a.m. We'll have dancing manatees. It'll be a visceral experience. It'll be an auditory experience. Uh, if it's wet and wild, then that's exactly what it'll be. So bring on the rain, bring on the, the listen. We don't have the luxury uh, the animals don't have the luxury of uh, changing their environment. So, you know, if we got to subsequently suffer a little bit with them, then that's what we'll do. We'll be there. Fantastic. And the rest of your uh, the rest of your trip in Florida, what, what do you have planned? 
Well, I just came out of my hot tub meeting and I'm hoping to, to maybe reunite with that team and keep that meeting going at some point. So yeah, maybe hot tubs and meetings would be great. But yeah, we did our mission yesterday. We got to reunite with the manatees. We'll get the protests uh, said and done. And then thereafter, hopefully for a moment, I'll just put my feet up before my flight the following day. Phil, I tell you, I'll say this again. I, I've known you now. We met for the first time in 2018, right? Or yeah, 2019. Yeah. You, look, you look younger now, five years later than you did back then having gotten rid of that lawfare stress of your life and, and the purpose that you found, it's amazing. And uh, it, it reflects from on your spirit. Uh, have I forgotten to ask you anything that you absolutely want to tell the world before we... Uh... No, you're always thorough as always, Kadiva. It's always a pleasure. So, okay, we're, we're going to see each other. Hopefully I'll be able to make it down. But if I don't make it down tomorrow, um, we've, we've met today and maybe we'll over the holidays in Canada. We'll see. Great. Look and oh, Phil, if you could, here. send me all of the links that you want people to find you at. I'll put it in the pinned comment on both YouTube and Rumble. Wonderful. Thanks, Viva. All right, man. Have a good one. Don't, get, ar don't get arrested. <laughs> good luck to me. Bye-bye. Right. Oh, I was there the last time when I went to the, um, to the Sea Aquarium and I'm making my video and I see a process server showing up. He's like, is Phil here? Are you Phil Diverse? And, and I saw him looking at his paper because he had a picture, I guess, and looking at people. like, this process server was looking to serve a lawsuit and... I'm a lawyer, so I, I know these things. And I'm like, oh, look, I'm looking over his shoulder. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a, that's a lawsuit. And he's like looking. And then he sees somebody who I guess he thought was Phil Demers. And he's like, I got you. He's like, dude, I'm not Phil Demers. Don't give me that lawsuit. And the guy's like, y y you are you sure you're not Phil Demers? I was like, dude. So uh, let's see. I, I, I imagine suing. I mean, I can imagine suing Phil because he's shining that Robert Govea watching the Watchers big, bright, shiny light on animals in captivity. The Miami Sea Aquarium was objectively depressing. They have a big, big, deep pool where they have dolphins, or at least you know a couple of dolphins. And I remember I'm looking in there, the dolphins playing with a ball, like throwing it down, and because of the buoyancy of the ball, it's rising back up into its mouth. And there was a there was a couple, like an elderly lady with with a grandkid, or looking at this and saying, "Oh, look how look how cute it's the, the the animals playing ball." And I'm like, "Dude, no, that's what it's doing. But what it's doing is that repetitive behavior." of intelligent animals in captivity. Just, you know, like the, like the elephant in a zoo, just, you know, continually rocking its head. It, it was not natural. It did not look happy, although to the untrained eye, it could look happy. This, this, this higher order intelligent animal, the, the dolphin in particular, some people think dolphins are more intelligent than humans, in a freaking pool for decades with a ball, like, like a prisoner bouncing a rubber ball off the wall. Uh, so that's it. Do we before we head over to Rumble? <laughs> do we want to watch a little more um, manatee porn? No, I'm jo I'm joking. I just, now I'm, now I'm kind of want to see what a manatee weenie looks like. Uh, that's the good news of the day, people. Uh, a concrete example of one man, one human, although he has a team, making a difference. And um, Phil has done some amazing stuff. It's actually amazing. And, and I'm not. I wasn't saying that to Phil to like stroke his ego. I remember interviewing him during the, the, the height of his Marine Land litigation lawfare. Nobody can understand the stress of litigation until you've litigated it or until you've been the victim of it. How Trump is um, looking younger and younger by the day, despite what's going on with him. He's, a, he's, he's cut from a different cloth. But uh, Phil Demers, once that litigation ended, uh, it was like an immediate switch and he, he he looked better younger and he's looking better and younger than ever okay so we're going to end this on youtube uh there's the link to local not to, that's to rumble if you are so inclined to head on over to locals you can watch it there as well viva barnes and um before we go over just going to thank the sponsor one more time and say if you want to sleep well in beautiful sheets cozyearth.com promo code viva up to 40% off your order. And uh, yeah, it'll, 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 it'll ship. We got, we got time. You got time before Christmas, people. So that's it. Links in the description. We're going to end it on YouTube. And we're going to go talk about, on, on Rumble, what are we going to talk about? Hunter Biden's presser. Oh my goodness. It's eight minutes of verbal diarrhea, but there's a lot to read into it. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy on that CNN town hall. Oh my goodness. What's her name? Abby Phillips? Can you imagine? Like, I... I'm, I'm realistic about my skill set. I have a very select skill set. I'm realistic about my skill set. I should be doing that. 
Oh my goodness. It, 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 was, a, it was a debacle of a joke. Uh, let me just go back to my list here. What do we got? We got that. Uh, and we're going to do some more Canadian stuff. They're coming after burping cows in Canada, people. And it's not, not the onion. It's, it's Justin Trudeau and some other good stuff. So we're going to end on YouTube. Come on over to vivabarnslaw.locals.com or Rumble.